Well, my name is Jared from the K-State Career Center, and I'm delighted to be joined today by a friend, a former colleague, native Kansas Cityan and fellow K-State alum, James Millsap. James, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me today. So excited to be here. Yeah, absolutely. It's my pleasure. Um, to begin with, just to kind of set the scene for our conversation, the Career Center is building a series of videos to support students in identifying culture clues in their job and internship searches. And these videos will culminate with a live Q&A for students on February 3rd at noon titled Finding the Dream Workplace during MLK Observance Week at K-State. Now, we understand and, and want students to know how critically important it is to bring their whole selves to work. And a significant part of being able to do that is understanding what you value and how that aligns with the organization or company under consideration. So with all that said, James, uh, let's go ahead and get the conversation started. So to provide our students a little bit of context, can you share a little bit about your educational background and then maybe a bit about the pathway to your current professional role? Absolutely. Uh, and thanks for the question, Jared. You know, <clears throat> I started at Kansas State University in what, like something like 2005 and uh, studied uh, agriculture uh, and agricultural economics. Um, and, um, and, you know, and I also worked for the College of Agriculture for diversity programs. Um, so the, the diversity link has definitely carried throughout my career. But at that same time, I was also working at Best Buy. I was a part timer, you know, <laughs> trying to make ends meet. And uh, thankfully, I matriculated through uh, a, a few management roles, uh, leadership roles from supervisor to manager to store manager with Best Buy. Um, and really, that talent or that kind of uh, experience caught the eye of Apple. And uh, I spent uh, almost two years at Apple and, and Best Buy pulled me back in, which I was uh, happy uh, to do. It was a great experience with uh, training, learning, and development specifically around uh, inclusion and diversity. And, and really that role carried me into the inclusion and diversity manager role for Dick Sporting Goods. So uh, whether it was Best Buy, Apple, or Dick Sporting Goods, uh, I, I've worked in companies that have supported retail uh, or that are retail organizations, and I've had support functions in those companies, and I, I couldn't be happier of the journey that I've had. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Um, well, I mean, James, at this point, obviously, you've worked for you know several organizations uh, post graduation, and I guess I'm kind of curious, like, what specific information have you personally sought out? Uh, to decide if the workplaces that you've been a part of were inclusive and equitable organizations? Well, you know, that's a really great question. And when I'm thinking about if an organization is inclusive, if it's equitable, if it's working toward that, uh, the, probably one of the number one things that I consider is what type of brand love is already out there for that business, that organization. Sometimes if it's a smaller company, uh, or a, a small business, you you it may not be as apparent, but uh, many times you can still find some brand sentiment for the company. And really, if if the company cares about how they're being seen by uh, their customers, then uh, many times they have that same fervor for their employees, and that's like a number one thing. Check check in with that brand love. Look at what people are saying about the organization on all social media platforms, <laughs> the last one. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me, the second thing I look for is, are they actively um, out, out there putting forth an inclusive image, right? Because many times it's what a company will put in writing that they truly believe. And if it's somewhere out there in writing, if they have a, a corporate social responsibility report or corporate uh, sustainability report, look at what it says. That will guide you as to what they believe is important. And I would say the last thing that I think about is how authentic are they in any of these things? And, and when I think about authenticity, I think about do their actions kind of match and equate to the promises that they have made? And even if there isn't a huge focus on inclusion and diversity, 
inside the organization, you can know uh, that you're probably on the right track if at least they can keep their word, if that makes sense. Yeah, it definitely does. And I guess to summarize a couple of those points, you mentioned like brand love, which I, I really appreciate that verbiage. You probably use that in your role, but brand love or brand sentiment, I think will really resonate. And I, I certainly recognize that. You mentioned uh, kind of all forms of social media being a place to look for that brand love and what people are saying about those companies. You also talked about imagery, imagery and um, what they have in writing. Um, I love the last point that you made about authenticity. Um, and I think it's a critical one for our students to recognize. I am curious as kind of a follow-up to that thought on authenticity. How do you know that the authenticity is, is present? Like what's an example that you would put out there for a student to see that they're walking the walk in addition to talking the talk? Yes, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, thank you for that question because many times when you're gauging if a, if a organization, a company is truly authentic, you're gonna have to have a little touch points. Or as uh, one of my coworkers says, uh, she always says, mm, let's double click on that. So <laughs> if we were gonna double click on how authentic is the company that uh, I'm, I'm going, uh, I'm, I'm interviewing with or I'm seeking to join, Think about a couple of things. One, when you're in an interview process, not only are they interviewing you as a culture fit, culture ad, maybe culture, cultural, ad uh, culturally adaptable in terms of the internal culture of the organization, but you should be interviewing them. And if you do not use that as an opportunity to ask more questions and maybe even to stump some of the interviewers that you, that you are um, talking with, because they're gonna be uh, some of the best people that you can get that sentiment from. And I think you have to really listen to what they're saying. And mm -hmm. if they can articulate clear points of view and even very specific things, let's just say if the company has made a very specific statement about inclusion and diversity, are they aware of, uh, do, they, do they know that statement? Can they articulate some of the points of that? You know, Can they articulate the stance? Um, also, what else? Um, who's the company really looking to benefit from a, a social uh, responsibility standpoint, um, like a social impact standpoint? What does yeah. that look like? And is it performative? And what I mean when I say performative, is it, um, is, can you, is there evidence that they really are trying to do the right thing and they are seeking out um, people who, you know, support their business and people who need um, this kind of this kind of help. You know, I think about uh, many of the companies that are, excuse me, many of the um, many of the groups or segments that even Best Buy and Dick's Sporting Goods go after. You know, Dick's Sporting Goods has a very um, a, a very specific program, uh, really evangelizing youth sports and youth sports in underrepresented areas, not just in youth sports and in areas where they already have access to it. And even with new brands that the company is looking at, they're thinking, how can we influence who gets to be a part of these activities? And that for me was kind of like a sticking point when, that made me really want to be a part of the Dick Sporting Goods team. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Having those those moments where it just clicks and you just you just know uh, based on that evidence that they provide that that's a perfect example. Um, you know, James. Obviously, I was fortunate enough to work alongside you for several years, and because of that, I I know that you're highly talented and have a diverse skill set uh, as a professional. You know, based on this, I'm I'm just guessing that you've also considered other organizations after your time at K State, and so. I'm kind of curious about particular factors that may have arisen along your journey to drive you away from certain organizations as you were considering different options. Yeah, yes, you know, that's a great question. And thank you for asking that. I have had the opportunity to sometimes be selective in the in, in the organizations uh, that I'm seeking to join and, and um, I'll say a few things that turn me uh, away from an organization or maybe will kind of naturally close some of the doors <clears throat> is all of those things that I, I mentioned before, 
Um, it, when you think about like the brand sentiment that's out there, when you think about the inclusivity that's out there and you think about the, um, are, are these brands and these companies authentic, uh, are authentic in what they're doing? If I don't see any of that present, it's pretty much a done deal for me. The other, the other thing that I, I would say is if I, perp if, if I can't make a cultural connection with anyone there, then for me, it's going to be very hard for me to be my most authentic self. And that's me where I feel like I don't have to code switch to, to be in the environment. And some, some kind of very easy things that you can do. One, I, I always love to look at a company's board of directors. Like who's, who's on your board of directors and when did they get there? <laughs> like, you know, and I'm also, I also give a little bit of grace to the people who really are hoping to make a sustainable change and in influence inclusion and diversity practices throughout the industry. So it's one, I understand that you're gonna see a lot of, people of color and people with uh, different identities that are being placed on boards as recently as last year, because it's become such a focus. But now what are they doing to show that they really care about this initiative? The other thing that uh, I would say is try to consider what the makeup of leadership looks like from an executive level, um, at mid-manager level, it doesn't matter whether you go into retail or you go into corporate America or you go into the, the government uh, sector. Um, many times they have access to this data. Are they willing to share that with you? Are they willing to give you just some insights about it? And if the answer is no, you have some decisions that you need to make. <laughs> and if I can go kind of matrixy on you you probably already made the decision you just need to figure out why you made it. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's good and and one of the points that you just made that i i want to clarify because i think it's so critically important is you referenced looking at a board of directors and i think what you started to share was there's a difference between who's sitting at the table and who has a voice at the table um based on what you shared is that accurate Yes, as a matter of you, you probably said it a little bit better uh, than me. How, it, is this so many, many companies, of course, will have uh, a board of directors. How active are their board of directors? How what what is the what's the representation look like from a male female standpoint, from a people of color standpoint? And also, uh, are there additional, um, you know, identities that are a part of who everyone is that, you know, that they value and that, um, and that the company really celebrates. And similarly, what does that look like at the executive level? Um, who, who is influencing the company and what, how, what external statements has the company made uh, about what they would like to do moving forward in terms of inclusion and diversity? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's good. Um, I'm curious too, James, like what other advice do you have for college students as they, you know, aspire to become part of inclusive and, and equitable organizations? So um, I, I think the, the number one thing, if I could go back, uh, you know, maybe when I was a college student and um, thinking about how um, I, you know, how I like to do work, how I like to get work done and things like that. I would probably focus in on what gives me energy. And for, and I'll, I'll kind of give you this uh, example. What gives me energy is strategy and building. And I was able to do a lot of that work with Best Buy and Apple, which kind of made me ready to take on much more of a building role with the sporting goods. Um, you know, the pathway forward was pretty clear at Best Buy. It was, a, a, and joining Dick Sporting Goods, I knew it was going to be a little bit gray, but I knew that I was going to be able to uh, create a lasting impact on inclusion and diversity programming for the people that come after me. That energizes me. And so that's the reason why I made the change. Um, I would challenge 
other people when you're looking for an organization is it may the work that you're staring down may be very, very hard work, but will it be work worth doing and will it give you energy? If it is, you might have a good, you might have a good fit. And considering it, consider if you know you're gonna be a culture fit for that organization, if you're gonna be a culture ad for that organization. And, or if you are going to be adaptable for that organization, you could be both, or we don't know what the organization needs, but you know that you could probably fit the bill. Uh, I, I think that's the, the, the thing, the advice that I wish someone would have given me, um, you know, as I was coming up. Absolutely. Well, that was chock full of, of so much uh, good information. And, I, you know, I think if, if I were to summarize, um, you did a, a brilliant job of giving some really specific and tangible uh, ways to look for culture clues with different organizations. And then I also love this idea of um, double clicking on that uh, if there's something that causes you to pause a little bit. So, it, James, thanks again for joining to share your perspective about identifying some of those culture clues. I I believe that providing professional insight uh, is one of the most valuable things alums can do for their alma maters and the students at those institutions. And I know our students who hear your story will appreciate the, the wisdom that you shared as well. Thank you for having me. I'm so um, grateful to be able to just even impart a little bit of the things that I've learned. And um, as always, email. Thanks, James. Yes, no problem.